Quilty is brought to you by Baby Lock Sewing and Long Arm Machines. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Aurafil, Aurafil Italian Thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Fairfield, together we can make beautiful things. Free Spirit, a new generation of creative and playful fabrics perfect for fashions, home decor, quilting, crafting, and more. Hovel Sewing, cut it close with hovels. Moda, make something quilty with Moda fabrics. Thermoweb, manufacturer of heat and bond adhesives and new Lux interfacings, proudly made in the USA. Hi, you're watching Quilty and Heather Kenyon, welcome back to the set. Thanks, it's always good to be back. You know, I mm -hmm. feel like this is like an important show. I mean, this, this <laughs> is the show that people are gonna well, like. Well, yes, I feel like lots of people have this question. They do. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how do you repair an old quilt? And we have a very special quilt. We have a quilt set. that is as old as I am. It's as old as you are. And we don't have to say how old that is, but <laughs> the thing is, this quilt looks like it's really old. But it's it does not. seem like it is older than it actually is. It's about 30 it's, years it's, old. Yeah, 30-ish yeah. years old. But take a look at this quilt. Now, you love this quilt, so I oh, have to be careful. well, well loved since I was a very small girl. It's a, a sunbonnet Sioux block here your grandmother made it for you correct my grandmother made it for me she made an identical one for my sister very cool and for cousins too all of the girl cousins have either some bonnet sue or a butterfly and this quilt has gone with you to college it has gone with you to new york city it has come back to with you to, from to chicago this quilt yeah. has made traveled the distance it has it has it looks it, and it, looks <laughs> it. so it's falling apart and can you it tell is. me why this quilt is falling apart there's a aside from the from the miles. I mean, there's a couple of reasons. It's really old. It was on a kid's bed. Like there are some purple stains somewhere on it from like a plum fight we had in our bedroom because that was a great idea and awesome. my parents were thrilled. Yes, right. <laughs> um, so you know, it just that plus um, it's a tied quilt instead of a quilted quilt, ah. and that that. Tied quilts were traditionally done so you could get them done and on the bed as quick as possible. I've done it. I've made one before. And they don't hold up to repeated washing. And when it's lived on a little girl's bed for a decade, it gets repeatedly washed. Right. So, so this quilt really has fallen apart. And, yeah. and there, there are other reasons, too, why it has, not just because it's tied, some of the materials used. Yeah, some of the fabric, you can see that the white block fabric is really th thin. It's almost threadbare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the batting is uh, you at some Show point you can see here, there's a hole in the bottom there's not so batting in the quilt and I, I don't i don't mean to be negative it's just that this quilt is amazing <laughs> yeah there's not batting there's, there's a, a blanket it's a blanket some sort of blanket is yeah. what was in it instead of batting <laughs> so so there's just a lot going on the the backing is is a is a like a nappy i have no idea some sort of probably blanket also right <laughs> and so but your grandmother grew up in the depression era she she, did. she was a subsistence farmer right yeah they were farmed they were never rich in in money but right. rich in family and i have a huge family so she was making She's like twenty some grandkids, so yeah. So we do not. Math. We don't. We don't fault her <laughs> right, for no. her. For her I methods. love them. Yes. <laughs> but at a certain point, a quilt like this either needs a lot of help, or you need to fold it up and put it with acid-free tissue paper into the cedar chest, or you know the hope chest, and sort of let it just be. Yeah. But if you want to, you can do repairs on an old quilt, and so we're going to show you today yeah, I feel one like mine, way. This is so damaged that it needs a little bit of help before it goes into the acid-free tissue. Exactly. Well, that's right. And we've so, got like three sort of kinds of repairs you can do. Exactly. So what's this first Well, first we'll start kind? with this first yeah, one because yeah, that's yeah, sort yeah. of the easiest. Great. And this one is, you can see the white stitching in the red fabric or what is left of the red right. printed fabric. Right. Um, which actually, I think it's like a dress material. It's wow. kind of cool. Cool. But um, where essentially I just took a needle and thread and mm -hmm. I didn't stitch all the way through. I just stitched through the batting and tacked the fabric that initially was from the quilt down. Okay. Gently. You kept it from going away more. Right. That's all I did. That's was it. I just tacked it down in place and kept it from going away. Okay. I think I also in the block like repaired the seams with yes. like a whip stitch or a ladder stitch that's pretty invisible, similar to what you'd use to tack your binding down by hand if you tack your binding down by hand. Yep. Yep. That's that was great. the easiest. That's an easy that easy was, fix. Yeah, just stop the damage. Right. <laughs> stop on that the damage. one. Okay, now now this one is more a little bit more involved, and then our final tip is right. The... This other one, this one is a little more involved. Hi, Iron, don't turn off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little more involved. So what I did was I took some tracing paper mm -hmm. and I laid it on the piece of the quilt that I wanted to save. Mm -hmm. So in this case, 
And I picked tracing paper because you can see through it. Mm -hmm. And I traced it the piece I wanted to replace that size. Mm -hmm. And then I would cut that out and put it onto the fabric that I chose. That So this was a yellow print. You can especially see it sort of in the mm -hmm. holes through the pink print. Mm -hmm. And I tried to pick a yellow print that was similar. Mm -hmm. um, this is the same piece. Just And so I took the little tracing paper pattern, mm -hmm. made a template, added a quarter inch seam, mm -hmm. used my iron, and you can see where I've sort of ironed around behind it. Sure, so you kind of gave your quarter inch seam the press to give yourself that edge. Right, yeah, to, okay. to tack it down. Because there's a zigzag applique here, I sort of wanted it to be inside the mm -hmm. zigzag applique. Mm -hmm. If I wanted, didn't want to do that, you could also just applique on top of it, especially if you pulled the blocks out of your original quilt. But yes. that's a much more intensive surgery job. It's another kind of fix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And then I just, and you can see, I pinned it down mm -hmm. somewhere. I have my little hand sewing needle here. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, I just did a, like a little tack. Mm -hmm. So I... Uh, Doing it the wrong direction here. But. Yeah. So the magic of TV sort of <laughs> to do things upside down. And right. Backwards. I just did a little ladder stitch. So I grab a little from that pressed edge that mm -hmm. I pressed into it. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit easier, though not quite as beautiful as needle turn applique. Mm -hmm. You could also needle turn applique. Right. But or if you are not a needle turn applique expert, this is a good work around. Easy way. Yeah. Yes. And you can also, you know, zigzag stitch on your machine. You could do that that way too, yeah. although it's going to come through the back if you do it right. that way like this. So so you just have to think through your repair and what you want to actually accomplish before you begin. Because if you were to go through all three layers, three layers. you're going to get the motif on the on back. back. You're essentially going to re-quilt it with that right. Okay. right. Which with this tied quilt, that may not be the worst thing. It might not be a problem. <laughs> so yeah, so you're, you're making a template for your pieces that you want to redo and then just simply appliquing over the top. Right. It's like double applique at this point. Yes, double applique at this point. Great. And then the last... Now, with, with your oh. applique press and cloth, did you... Oh, no, go ahead. Sorry, that's um, next, right? Yeah, and I didn't press it down. I just sort of pinned it. You could okay. press it down. I opted not to because I didn't want to damage the fabric underneath yeah. with heat mm -hmm. unnecess or some sort of chemical bond unnecessarily. Right. I, I just didn't know what would happen, and it's not like I can try a sample of this and then start with something new if it didn't work right. out. Right. So okay, gonna, now this last one. We're gonna kind of scooch over here by the iron because okay. we'll need a little bit of the pressing cloth okay. for this. Got your supplies. Um, and I have, uh, I have my little heat and bond uh, wrapper that has my instructions mm -hmm. and I have little pieces of it and I have my pressing cloth. And I think okay. that's all I need. You can see that this piece here is coming apart from the whole side here. Mm -hmm. Plus, it is, it's not like there's a, a seam I can, or, or a, an edge I can press into to right. hand sew it down, because that would be sort of the easiest fix. Mm -hmm. So what I could do, and probably what I would opt to do, is... And we're um, using this. We're using the right. ultra hold, a very strong... What do you need? scissors yeah, over there, absolutely. so I can cut a little slice. Mm -hmm. um, just a little slice. I wouldn't need a whole lot. And put it, mm -hmm. I would probably put it to the one that I'm gonna attach to first. Okay. Normally they request that you do it separate from the quilt. That's a little hard right here. Right, you gotta use the tools however you can make them work for you. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna tuck pressing cloth in. Oh, I'm gonna have to scooch a little bit more mm -hmm. so we're actually on the Yeah, don't iron on the table. The ironing board. We kinda need the, the table. Ironing table. Mm -hmm. And um, I followed the instructions that were on the package. Uh -huh. And you press with the pressing cloth to keep any goo or gunk off your iron. That's why you use a pressing cloth, because there's adhesives and things in these, in these bonding right. products that we use. I think that's probably mm -hmm. enough for that. You're supposed to let it cool. You yeah, don't quite okay. have time for that here. But... And the... Yeah, the glue gets transferred onto the, Off fabric, the fabric from yes. the paper. So you can kind of see that it's shiny there mm -hmm. where the glue is. And then I'm going to line up where I want this to be. Mm -hmm. While it's hot, you can still sort of tack it yeah, down. Yeah. <laughs> and you press it again. And then I'm going to press it again. Cool. Well, that is, those are three great fixes for an old quilt um, that you want to try and save. Um, probably shouldn't ever wash this again. No, I'm never going to wash again. this again. <laughs> and, and so a few things that we can learn. Oh, and there's one more fix. Actually, the fourth fix is to take the quilt apart 
save the blocks that you can save and put them into a new quilt, right? Yeah. Try to just repurpose something. Find uh, a different yellow solid to yeah. give it the same f flavor, but yeah. that's new. Exactly. And and while we don't want to be negative, this is a quilt that is clearly loved so much that it's falling apart, but it is a good lesson. You know, use the best fabrics that you can afford. Um, doesn't mean you have to spend a bazillion dollars on them, but you know, shop sales and swap with friends and right. try to get high quality materials because those quilts will last uh, longer than ones that are not so much made with those materials. So right. do, do your best, but the, the better quality thread you use, the, the better batting that you use, uh, you know, we... Yeah, your quilt will last longer. And if right. you're trying to make an heirloom for family or for yourself, that it will be a longer heirloom if exactly. you use better materials. Yep, mm -hmm. and, and wash it properly too. And we talk about all that mm -hmm. on Quilty. Thank you, Heather. This is, I, it's, thank you. Because <laughs> this is like awesome. This is an awesome quilt to show. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the show. Bye. Quilty is brought to you by Baby Lock Sewing and Long Arm Machines. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Aurafil, Aurafil Italian Thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Fairfield, together we can make beautiful things. Free Spirit, a new generation of creative and playful fabrics perfect for fashions, home decor, quilting, crafting, and more. Hovel Sewing, cut it close with hovels. Moda, make something quilty with Moda fabrics. Thermoweb, manufacturer of heat and bond adhesives and new Lux interfacings, proudly made in the USA.